Well, we're back with another episode of Scrapyard Science today. A while back, we drained all the engine oil out of a Dodge Caravan to see how long it would run with no oil at all. And if I remember correctly, I think it ran for 36 seconds. So today, we're gonna do something similar, except we're going to fill the engine back up with water. So we're gonna drain the oil out of this little Chevy Aveo, fill it up with water, fire it up, and see how long it will run for. But just remember, we are a bunch of untrained professionals, or trained unprofessionals, Either way, you know what I'm trying to say, but let's take a closer look at the car. All right, so today's test subject is this little Chevy Aveo with a 9.6 liter, 780 horsepower, four cylinder engine. It does not have a battery in it, so just like last time, we're going to have to jump it off with the service truck. And I know the service truck will jump it off with no battery because I just had it running. I was actually on the fence whether or not I wanted to use this car for this test. So I fired it up and drove it across the yard, and when I got all the way to the other side of the yard, the transmission stopped pulling. So I just coasted it back here where I decided this was going to be its final resting place. This car has like 145,000 miles on it. I can't show you because there's no battery in it, but before we fire it back up after we get the engine oil drained, I will show you guys how many miles are on it. It's actually not a bad looking little car, but... It is here at the scrap yard. We have saved it for a while, unsure what we were gonna do with it. And it's just been in our back lot. And unfortunately, we are running out of room for storage back here. So we're starting to get rid of some stuff and this one's gotta go. I do sort of wish I didn't uh, just run this thing till it's extremely hot because the exhaust runs right under the oil pan. So here's to hoping I don't burn myself. All right, I got the engine oil drained and I'm getting ready to put water back in the engine. But just so you can see, it does not have any engine oil left in it whatsoever. Now, of course, there's going to be a little bit of residual down in the engine, which you can see the top of the valve cover there. There's some residual oil, but it's going to mostly be water. So let's get it filled up. And see. All right, I believe this engine calls for right at a gallon of oil. So it should take just a little bit less than half of this old def jug full of water. This is water, I just filled it up. So I guess there's nothing left to do but fill it up and fire it up. I guess it doesn't really matter if I overfill it just a little bit, but I'll try not to. This might not quite be enough. So let's check our water level here. Okay, it's really hard to check because the residual oil and the water separate. Also, I did not drain the oil filter, so whatever amount of oil is in that oil filter is going to get mixed with that water. We'll check it after we run it. I'm sure it's going to look like a milky, nasty mess. And then, of course, before we crush this car, we're going to have to drain it again. So it is what it is. The things we have to go through for scrapyard science. Okay, I'm not really sure. It's like I said, it's all kind of separated, but it's all the way up to here on the stick and the max level's there. So I think we're just gonna go with that and call it good. All right, so I'm gonna hook the jumper cables back up from the service truck. I'm gonna try to leave the service truck off because that thing still has that squealing belt that's very annoying. Hopefully it'll give it enough juice to fire the car without a battery in it. If not, I will have to fire up the service truck and we'll just have to ignore that chirping belt. Also, I don't want you guys to think that I'm not dedicated to you because uh, this is more dirty than I get when I'm actually working here during the week. So I normally don't come down here and roll around in the dirt unless I absolutely have to, but I'm willing to do that for you guys. But anyways, Let's hook it up and get started. All right, so we're all hooked up and I'm getting ready to fire it up. I'm gonna show you how many miles are on the dash really fast before we do that. And then also, as soon as I fire it up, I'm going to jump out of it, but I'm gonna start hitting record on my phone, and then that will keep track of how long the engine actually runs. So as soon as I hear the engine stop, I'll look at the recording on my phone, and that'll tell us about how long it lasted. Okay, this thing has, not sure how clearly you can see that, but it's 145,006 miles. And when I was driving it around just a little bit ago, it had no check engine lights. No warning lights, got it up to temperature. You can see the temperature gauge is still about mid-range to operating temperature. So 
it's in pretty good shape and I'd say that this is probably a pretty good test for a good engine full of water. And I almost forgot. I think for this to be a fair test, I need to wedge the gas pedal so that this thing is held wide open. That's what we did in the last test. So it wouldn't be a fair comparison of no oil versus water instead of oil unless we ran them both at wide open. So let me go find something really fast to wedge for the gas pedal and then I'll fire it up. All right, I've got the gas pedal wedge and it's ready to go. a bummer so I'm not sure what that was all about like I said just 10 minutes ago I had this thing running and driving around and the engine ran flawlessly the only thing I can think is that maybe it has a safety feature if you're holding the gas pedal down it won't fire up so I'm gonna try to release the gas pedal see if it'll start and then immediately press it back down so we'll lose a couple seconds of it being wide open but I, I'm not even sure that that's the reason why it won't start but it's worth a shot about 30 seconds when I looked at my phone as soon as I moved out of the way there was it was at 19 and it died right at about 49 so quite not quite as long as I had expected it definitely sounded like it locked up again I will try the key again in a second and and make sure but it definitely started leaking the water out from somewhere I thought maybe I didn't get the oil drain plug quite tight enough but it doesn't look like it was coming from the drain plug it looks like it was coming from somewhere else so it's definitely leaking water from multiple places but I can't really tell where from Okay, one place is from the oil drain plug and it kind of looks like from maybe all the way around the oil pan and then there's a second place towards the front of the motor so I'm not sure if uh, it maybe had like a timing cover leak or a valve cover leak and the water's just so thin that it could pour right through there but it's definitely leaking from multiple places and I'm kind of surprised that it only lasted 30 seconds because the caravan lasted i think it was 36 seconds with no oil at all i figured the water would at least keep it cooler for a couple seconds longer and maybe help it run for just a little bit longer i didn't expect it to go very long but i did expect it to go longer than the one with no oil so that's pretty surprising but i guess now we know i'm gonna hook the cables back up and see if it'll spin over again which i highly doubt it sounded like it locked up like the last one Okay, it's definitely not locked up. I thought it was gonna fire back up there for a second. I'm gonna give it just a second to cool down and then I'm gonna try it again. If I have to, I'll get a can of ether and shoot that into the air filter and see if that'll help boost it started. It probably doesn't help that we don't have a battery in it because it's just pulling off of the service truck, but it was still turning over at least fast enough to start because it started the first time and it almost started there again. So I'm going to show you the most improper way 
to spray ether into your car, and that's to take your brass hammer and just smash the air box. And see, now I can just spray the ether right in there, and I didn't even have to take the bolts out. Now it sounds like the jumper cables aren't doing the job. I'm gonna try to crank the service truck up, see if that gives it some more juice. I think the engine's definitely a little bit tight. It's turning over a lot slower and then the ether on top of that is making it difficult for it to turn over because it's turning over a lot better. Before I sprayed the ether in there, and I figured if it had a little bit of extra starting power, it would take off, but obviously I was wrong. It did fire back up and that one lasted about 20 seconds. I couldn't get out of the car that time. Anytime I would try to let off the, the throttle, it would just want to die. And to get it to fire up, I had to hold the key. Basically that whole time it sounded like it was starting or, or even running because as soon as I let off, it would just die. But I did eventually let off the key and it stayed running by itself. And I had the gas pedal all the way to the floor and it got 20 seconds back out of it. So. If you add the two together, it lasted about 50 seconds, which is longer than the one with no oil, but I'm not really sure what, what our unwritten rules are gonna be, if it's as many times as it fires up or just the first time. But I will say it didn't lock up the first time. It sounded like it did the second time. And the one without oil, it locked up the first time. I even came back this, the next day and tried to fire it back up and it, would, it wouldn't even budge. So I'm gonna try this one again and see that it for sure locked up that time, but it definitely sounded like it did. Okay, it didn't. So I guess we're going for a third round and uh, we'll see how long it lasts this time. I'm gonna fire the service truck back up and I'm gonna try ether again. I think that helped it fire up the last time. there for a second but the longer I held the starter the slower it got and the tighter the engine sounded like it was getting but I'm not sure if we're gonna get it to fire back up again or not I'm gonna let it sit for just a couple minutes and maybe let it cool off just a little bit and then I'll try it again and if you're wondering what the engine oil looks like I'm not sure how well the camera is focusing but 
it is a yellow nasty sludgy looking paste basically what I expected well it's been about 10 minutes since I last tried and the Sun is going down and it's starting to get late so I'm going to give this one more attempt if we can get it to fire up that's great if not we'll call it there 50 seconds is pretty good total like I said I didn't expect it to go very long I am pretty surprised that the engine hasn't locked up so it, the first time I thought it did, the second time I definitely thought it did because that loud screeching noise as it shut down. So uh, overall I'm surprised as it is, but if we could get to fire up one more time that'd be awesome. Well, I think that's it. I don't think it's going to fire back up. I was hoping like the last time we'd get a little bit more of a catastrophic failure and something a little bit more exciting, but it is what it is. So if you guys have any ideas on what we should try next, I think the next one I'm going to do is maybe cooking oil instead of engine oil. And surely that one will last quite a bit longer. Uh, but any other types of fluids or things you guys want to see, let me know and then as scrap cars come in that still run I'll try to make it happen uh, it does take me a little bit of time to make this happen because I come over here on the weekends and do it so if it's a couple weeks before you see another one of these that's why well it's been about 24 hours since we did the water test on the Chevy Aveo and as I was editing the video last night I couldn't help but think that the car may have sounded like it was out of gas. I did double check whenever I turned the key on and off yesterday when we were testing it that the gas gauge was moving. It was at the E mark but it was still going up whenever I turned the key on so I figured that it had enough gas in it. Plus I had it running before that and I turned it off it's not like it ran out of gas. but. To kind of prove that that's not what's wrong with it or to figure out if that is what's wrong with it I'm gonna hook the jumper cables back up and try it before I add any gas and then I'll add just a little bit to the tank and try it again and see if it'll fire up so we'll see what happens Well, at least I think that proves that it wasn't out of gas. I'm kind of surprised that it fired up for the third time, but I had the gas pedal pushed all the way to the floor that entire time and it never got above like 500 RPMs. So I don't think it has any compression or the spark plugs are completely fouled or the rings are shot. Some, something is preventing that engine from running properly, but at least now we know for sure. Well, even though I don't think that it's out of gas and that's what's preventing it from running because it did fire up there for the sake of scrapyard science and make sure we do this thoroughly, I'm gonna go fill up this one gallon can, put it in and just rule that out and then that'll be the end all be all. So I'm gonna go fill this up and I'll be right back. Well, here's to wasting five bucks and to scrapyard science. The gas cap must be on the other side. All right, it's dead. It's official. Wasn't out of gas. Well, at least now we know for sure that it wasn't because this thing was out of gas. I didn't think that it was, but like I said, when I was editing the video, I kind of thought that it sounded like it was running out of gas. So I wanted to make sure and make sure I gave you guys the full picture and didn't cut us short. I think we're still going to count this one at 50 seconds of run time because that little bit of time that it ran today, it wouldn't even rev up past 400 or 500 RPMs. So I don't think we should count that. And then also after I added gas to it and got it to fire it back up that time, it wouldn't rev up again. And so I tried to make it a little bit more exciting and sort of neutral drop it into reverse and that's why the car sort of shook a little bit and then instantly turned off and it wouldn't fire back up after that so that's going to be it for this one tomorrow we'll get it drained the rest of the way and crushed and shipped out of here but anyways as always 
Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.